Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about one of the most important metaphysicians of the 20th century named René Guénon. Now very few people have heard of Guénon's name or know who he was and what he wrote and what he was all about. The number of people who read Guénon nowadays is very 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 few. However, Guénon was a very important and seminal figure. He is considered to be the most important metaphysician to have expounded, the first metaphysician to have expounded pure metaphysics in the modern world. According to Ananda Kumaraswamy, he is the most significant author of our time. Some of Genon's influences were Plato, Shankara, Leibniz, Lao Tzu, and the three main traditions to which he was devoted were Islam, Hinduism, and Taoism. Genon knew several languages including Arabic, Greek, Sanskrit, Latin, and the chief European languages, and Chinese, and many others. And he was a prolific author who wrote 17 books during his lifetime. And many of his articles were published after his death in separate volumes and collections. He had great influence upon many, many important philosophers and scholars, such as Ananda Kumaraswamy, Sayyid Hussein and Nast, Harry Oldmido, William Stoddard, Wolfgang Smith, Houston Smith. And in this video, it is our purpose to give a brief introduction to his life and go over some of the aspects of his writings about what he said and what he talked about uh, in his corpus and also review a few of his important works. Now let's see who René Guénon was and what were his main thoughts. Now we do not know much about Guénon's personality and his personal life because he was an extremely reticent and withdrawn individual who refrained from talking about himself too much. Even his close friends don't know much about him. He was very anonymous, so to speak. For this reason, the majority of the books that are written about Guénon's life are full of factual errors because he was extremely reticent. And Ananda Kumaraswamy has said something very interesting about this aspect of Guénon. He says, the fact is that Guénon has the invisibility of the complete philosopher and that our teleology can only be fulfilled when we really become no one. However, we do know a few things about Guénon. We know that he was born in 1886 in France and that he had a traditional Catholic upbringing. We do know that he was a very good student and that he excelled in mathematics and philosophy. We do know that he had a very bad health, a very poor health. For this reason, he was unable to finish his university studies and had to terminate them midway. And we do know that around the age of 21, he met certain Hindus of the Advaita Vedanta school who initiated Genon into their lineage going back to Adi Shankara. And it is assumed that Genon had acquired his knowledge of Hindu metaphysics and Sanskrit from these Hindu individuals whose identity we do not know. We do also know that around the age of 24, Guénon began to write extensively and to publish his works in many different journals and that he made a conversion to Islam and changed his name to Abdul Wahid Yahya and moved to Egypt and remained there until his death. However, even though Guénon was a Muslim, he made it a rule to expound his metaphysics from the Hindu point of view. Primarily, his ex metaphysics is Hindu, and then Islamic, and then Taoist. And of course, he incorporates many different traditions in his writings, which we will mention later. It is said that Genon would sleep only two to three hours a night, and that he would spend the majority of his time in writing, reflection, prayer, studying, and contemplation. He was an extremely pious and devout man, who devoted his entire life to study of the one single truth. Now, what are some of the characteristics of Genon's thought and ideas? Let's find out. According to Friedrich Schoen, Genon's writings can be characterized by intellectuality, universality, tradition, and theory. The work is intellectual because it deals with knowledge. And by intellectual, we don't mean the modern sense of intellectuality, uh, which public intellectuals are and so forth, but intellectual in a sense that it deals with intellect, with that principial and high faculty of the human being. It deals with integral and uh, principial knowledge. It is universal because it's, because it encompasses a variety of traditions and different perspectives. That is, it talks about Advaita Vedanta school. It encompasses Hinduism, Sufism, Taoism, and uh, Christian 
Catholicism. Now the work is also traditional because it talks about the rites and the importance of certain ceremonies and the exoteric aspect of tradition. And he also talks about theory, which is uh, basically his works are theoretical. That is, uh, they don't deal with the practical aspect of spirituality. If you read Genon, you realize that his works are very theoretical. And this really goes back to the fact that he was a mathematician. And because of that, the way that he expounded his theories are very, very abstract. And he doesn't bring those teachings and doctrines into the operative level and tell you what to do exactly. What his function was, was to uh, clear the ground and correct the thinking of modern man. In his writings, Genon ranges over a vast domain, Vedanta, the Chinese tradition, Christianity, Sufism, folklore, and mythology. He talks about four things, metaphysical doctrine, traditional principles, symbolism, and criticism of the modern world. Now, as we said before, Genon was the first person to have expounded pure metaphysics in the modern world in a comprehensive manner, and the first person to have criticized the modern world with such philosophical clarity. His criticism of the modern world is relentless. He has exposed the major errors of modern mentality and the fact that they have deviated from the traditional and principle way. It is important to know that when Genon was doing all this, he was pretty much alone. He was a lonely voice in that time, and only later on he was his work was continued by such figures as Friedrich Schuon and Ananda Kumar Swami. Now in metaphysical doctrine, Genon basically distinguished metaphysics from what is thought as metaphysics in the world today. That is, he made a distinction between ration, rationalism, ratiocination, and intellectual intuition. He explained the true nature of metaphysics and distinguished it completely from what we study as metaphysics in the university today. According to Genon, the majority of the things that are taught in the university and we know as metaphysics are in fact not metaphysics in its integral aspect. They are hardly anything more than epistemology. And according to Genon himself, defining metaphysic is very difficult. He himself says in his writings that it is impossible to define metaphysics because you limit it by definition. And then he says that metaphysics is the science of the real, the science of the ultimate principle, the supreme principle of the possibilities of being and non-being, of becoming and transformation, such as the science of metaphysics. And it deals with what is illusory and what is real in the light of the one truth that is the one God reality, the real. Now, it would be good here to cite a passage by Genon about how to comprehend metaphysics and how to have a certain understanding of it. He says, the being that has attained this primordial state is still only a human individual and is without effect possession of any superindividual states. Nevertheless, he is henceforth liberated from time, that apparent succession of things having been transmuted into simultaneity. He is in conscious possession of a faculty unknown to the ordinary man, which might be called the sense of eternity. This is of extreme importance, for he who cannot rise above the vantage point of temporal succession and envisage all things in simultaneous mode is incapable of the least conception of the metaphysical order. The first thing to be done by those who wish to achieve true metaphysical understanding is to step outside time, we would willingly say into non-time. Another aspect of Geno's writings which is very, very important is his criticism of the modern world. And he has emphasized this most succinctly in his book, The Crisis of the Modern World, which uh, is a wonderful book. He deals with the various errors of modern mentality, philosophy, and science, and gives us a detailed account of their errors. And Genon also has criticized the spiritualist movements, theos theosophical movements, and certain neo-spiritual um, organizations, and so on and so forth. And he has also written a few books about this. I think it's called The Spiritist Fallacy, in which he discusses the spiritist movements and things like that. He is totally opposed to that type of spirituality and has basically cleared the ground before he talked about metaphysics. He didn't want people to confuse it with that spiritist and spiritual movements. He believes that these theosophical and neo-spiritual movements and 
organizations are nothing but pseudo-religion and pseudo-spirituality. Genon has also written extensively about modern science and its deviations. He has criticized modern science quite a lot and says that it has lost its connection with higher principles and is basically delving into the surface of things without taking account of what lies beyond it. Genon also criticizes another aspect of modernity and that is individualism and that is the negation of any higher principle above the human level. He says that individualism is the same thing as humanism, that is reducing everything down to the human level. One example of individualism is claiming ideas for oneself and Genon writes that in, in traditional societies something like this would have been very absurd. If something was true it belonged to everybody. Nobody could have claimed an idea for himself or herself, that this is only a modern phenomenon, something that never occurred in traditional societies. Genon has also devoted many studies to the science of symbolism. He has written many, many articles on the subject. He was an incredible mythologist and he knew the symbolism of many different objects in different traditions, for example, symbolism of the ladder, symbolism of the cross, which is his book, symbolism of the cave, symbolism of the sword, I can go on and on. He has also dedicated a book to this uh, study of symbolism. Now, one of the books that Genon has written, which is of great importance, is this book, This Reign of Quantity and a Sign of the Times. This book is very, very, very important, very interesting. It is quite demanding and difficult read. It's very doctrinal in essence. It differs a bit from his Crisis of the Modern World, and which I don't have at the moment. Um, that book is very, uh, perhaps, is less technical. This book is more uh, metaphysical in nature. For example, it deals with some of the articles here are the twofold significance of anonymity, ancient crafts and modern industry, the principle of individuation, the qualitative de determinations of time. He talks about the nature of time and space and such serious and difficult stuff. But it's a very interesting read. I would highly recommend you to read this book. If you perhaps want to start reading Genon, it's a good idea to start with this book or Crisis of the Modern World. Reign of Quantity and the Sign of the Times and the Crisis of the Modern World are his most important works when it comes to the criticism of the modern world. Introduction to the study of Hindu doctrines is Genon's first book. He, this is the first book that Genon ever wrote. And this was basically initially his thesis for the university, but it was rejected by the professor there because apparently he did not incorporate any history in his work. So because he was a metaphysician, he was concerned with first principles. And for that reason, he did not include that many historical studies. And for this reason, it was one of the reasons why it was rejected, but it was later on published as a book, Introduction to the Study of Hindu Doctrines. It's a metaphysical work of the highest order. Uh, I think it was the first book that came out that dealt with pure metaphysics. So those of you who want to know what traditional metaphysics is, I would highly recommend you to get this book and study it feverishly. Uh, introduction to the Study of Hindu Doctrines. Very, 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 very interesting. It's a very important work and it's beautifully written. Genon's prose is just beautiful. Even though these are translations of his French, they say that his French is very, very precise and very limpid and lucid, but the English translations are no less beautiful. Now, this book, Symbols of the Sacred Science, Symbols of Sacred Science, is Genon's most extensive study of the science of symbolism. He discusses symbolism in a very detailed manner. For example, he talks about the science of letters, el mul huruf in Arabic. He talks about the language of the birds. He talks about some aspects of the symbolism of the fish. He wrote this treatise, uh, The Metaphysical Principles of the Infinitesimal Calculus. For those of you who are mathematically illiterate, including myself, this book could be a bit demanding and difficult to read, but uh, it is written in a way that it concerns the metaphysics of math. So it's not that technical. If you read it, um, you would gain a lot, actually, even though like my math is not good. But when I read this book, 
uh, gain a lot with regards to its metaphysics, the metaphysics of math. Okay, now this work, Man and His Becoming According to Vedanta. This book is Genon's most magisterial work. This book is pure metaphysics. The articles here are very condensed. He talks about essential unity and identity of the self. Manas or the inward sense. The vital center of the human being, seat of Brahma. Fundamental distinction between self and ego. Very, very remarkable. Another book is Perspectives on Initiation. I haven't read this yet. I don't know much about it, so I cannot provide any comments. For example, Myths and Mysteries and Symbols. It deals with symbolism. Initiatic Transmission. The Multiple States of the Being. Talks about the different levels of reality. It's a very relatively short book, as you can see. It's only 80 pages, around 80, 90 pages. We also have this work, The Great Triad. Very interesting work. It deals with Taoism, and it is the last book that appeared in his lifetime. So this was the last book that he ever published. Initiation and Spiritual Realization. This also deals with initiation. I haven't read this yet. And also this one, which I don't know how to pronounce, is called Miscellanea. Miscellanea. This was also not published throughout his lifetime. It's a collection of his articles when he was... A uh, collection of his first articles before he, I think, converted to Islam. But very interesting articles here. The conditions of corporeal existence, the arts and the traditional conception, on mathematical notation, initiation and the crafts on the production of numbers, know thyself, spirit and intellect, monotheism, and angelology. There's also a collection of his essential articles published by World Wisdom, introduction by Martin Lings, The Essential Renegadon. This book is very, very good as a starting point if you want to get into Genon's writings and study them. Perhaps this book is very good. It's a collection of his most important articles dealing with the four aspects of his studies, that is, criticism of the modern world, metaphysics, tradition, symbolism. For example, it has the symbolism of the grail. It has the article Eastern Metaphysics, which is his very important article. It deals with civilization and progress, quality and quantity, and material civilization. So it has drawn from the most important writings of Genon, start reading Genon, I believe that this work is essential. The Essential Rene Genon, published by World Wisdom. Wonderful book. Now, there are, of course, many other books that Genon has written. I don't have them at the moment. I had The Symbolism of the Cross, but that book is also very good. There is also another work by Genon entitled Esotericism of Dante. Other books include, for example, The King of the World and many, many other works. I think that to begin reading Genon, it would be good to start with either Crisis of the Modern World, Reign of Quantity and a Sign of the Times, or <clears throat> Man and His Becoming According to Vedanta. Now we try to provide a brief and short introduction to Genon's life, ideas, and his books. Hopefully in the future we will make more videos about Genon and his thoughts and ideas, and also the traditionalist school of thought, which is of great importance, but it's being neglected by so many people. This school of thought possesses some of the greatest writings ever. It's quite a shame that people such as Kumaraswamy, Genon, and Shuan are not known that much. These people were very important and very seminal, and their writings are so deep and so significant that they deserve more attention. However, I hope that you found this video helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Done.